didn't it just kind of evolve just because we kept hearing like no good dudes were around or whatever yeah 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 that's what it was it, it started out kind of like that's one thing but then it and, and you're right and that's what it was that's exactly what it was okay and then we started exploring that and then but originally the movie was supposed to be seven guys and through these guys we want to tell the story of how men think and operate and then yeah. and then that evolved into a documentary what, what was what was the the joys and the woes of doing this documentary man you know it depends on, it depends on um where where you're talking about like if, if we're talking about like from young married couples uh, I I learned that nobody should get married young. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I'm not even kidding. I, I don't even give a shit what nobody think. Like, you know, you can't tell what people are going to do when it matters. Fuck that. Nope. Cause you, you don't even know who you are yet. That's right. for young men. Yeah. That's for young men. Um, and I, I learned that, uh, and I don't know where this comes from, or maybe it's just where we're from, you know, but by nature, uh, most women are selfish. <laughs> yeah. And I don't even know if they even know it, but, you know, they got all these um, preconceptions and ideas about what it is, the relationship is, and what they want, and what they're going to have, and all these fucking boxes that need to be checked. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, yep. also, but I also kind of learned that, uh, you know, that communication thing, uh, we, we really need to get to know each other, know, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I don't mean know each other personally, but just know, you know, men need to know how women operate and, and more importantly, women need to know how men operate. And you know, and, yeah. and, and that we're real simple creatures. They, they, we're not complicated at all. And somehow, they make us complicated. And when we're not, yep. you know, so, I mean, I, and I guess I'm kind of biased in some of the shit I've learned. You know, I'm trying to be as diplomatic as possible, but, but, but that's what I've learned. Biologically, I guess, uh, hormonally. And I didn't know before. I, I didn't know how uh, emotionally driven women were. I didn't either. Right? Um, yeah. I, I had no idea. I thought they were a bit more logical, but and yeah, and I don't. Gotta, I got to be honest with you. I don't fault them mm -hmm. uh, for being that way because I just think that's the way they're made. They're made to be that way because they need to be nurturing. They need to, you know, have all these uh, feminine qualities and these caring qualities. But it, those qualities seem to throw logic right the fuck out the window. Yeah. And and that's a lot of the, uh, you know, and, 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 and I'll say this, sometimes they give dudes a lot of chances that they shouldn't even give them, you know? Uh, but I think that's part of that nurturing uh, quality. Gotcha. Uh, that's deep. That's deep. You know, I'll say this, for women it's harder uh, for them to, uh, I think, be more successful in relationships just because of that alone. Okay. You know, if, if I'll give you an example, man. If I'm single, I'm meeting a woman, telling her I'm single, and this is the way I'm going to stay. But if she wants to, you know, be friends and, you know, we enjoy each other's company and go have a good time. Mm -hmm. For some particular reason, she didn't hear any of that shit. <laughs> and all she heard was, you know, I don't know what she heard. But you find, you know, weeks or months into a, a, a friendship, yeah, and especially if it's involving benefit, like everything you said is out the window. I don't know. I mean, relationships are delicate, man. And uh, you know, I got married young, and that's why I mentioned in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, that was. Uh, and, and I mean, even my wife can concur, man. She'll she'll tell you, nope, we shouldn't have got married. Got you. Nope. It was just it, you're just not you're not grown yet. I know you you you're an adult. In reference to your age, but you you, have, you don't have enough life experience. Right. Yeah. You just don't. You know whether that be uh, other relationships, whether that be traveling, and whether that be you know getting yourself together in reference to your 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 job or being an entrepreneur. You just don't have enough life yet. Mm -hmm. The problem is getting married young. You, you're growing up. You're still trying to figure it out. Right. So while you're trying to figure it out. 
you having kids and having a mortgage and having a, mm-hmm. you know, just just so many things, man. So, uh, but that documentary, it was awesome. It was an awesome experience. And and selfishly for me, more therapeutic than anything, you know. Out of everything, what was the worst part or the worst thing that you think we, we endured during the film? Now, I'm going to tell think, you. Uh, I think tech, technology, we had everything. We had good subject matter. We had good folks. Yeah. We had... Uh, we had all the right stuff mm-hmm. and equipment, man. Right. We would have done a documentary with, with what's available now. Shit, we'd be just fine. And, dude, and we get the shit done in one third of the time. Like, just even I'm just like, oh, man, we just bumped up and, and just put the little few, a couple of extra hundreds to get this right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it would have made I, a I difference. I agree with you with that. Yeah, right. I, you Because, you know, we was always being, I don't even know if frugal is the word. We was being dirt cheap. And I know from my ignorance, I was like, man, who cares? It's just, it's film. And that, and then it's, that, that was one of the learning things for me. I was just like, wow, man. I had no idea how much of a difference that, that really makes. I was, I was looks older than what it is, and it's not that old. But it just looks and old. Were, and that's the difference. Yeah, right we, we were like two generations behind being cheap using that camera um, yeah. type of equipment. And it, yeah, I, just, I don't like how it just, I mean, we didn't know. But it, I don't like how it held up over time. <laughs> yeah, one of the ones that burned the most for me. I don't know if you remember this, but at the time, remember Shavari, uh For nobody who knows Shavari, Shavari was a friend of ours, and he was living at the time in San Antonio, right, or somewhere in Texas. So I said, "Wow, this would be great." After talking to him, he got inspired. He said, "Man," and then I talked to my friend in San Antonio, and was pitching to her what we were doing. Right, mm-hmm. set it up with Shavari. To, yep. dr- to drive from wherever he was, which is about, I think, a two-hour ride from wherever he was to get to San Antonio. Mm-hmm. He drives to my friend's house. They meet. Everything goes according to plan. And she had a layout where it was like girls' night out. Oh, I know what you're getting ready to do. Yeah, talk but about. It, was, it was in Texas. And I was like, oh, my God. I was so excited about getting this footage because I was like, we're getting a different dynamic outside of the, the metropolitan area. I'm like, this is going to be perfect. Yeah. I talked to Shavari after the shoot. He said everything went well. I even, I sent him, I think I uh, sent him, I think he had a camera and I had shipped down one of our cameras. So right. he had two cameras like how we normally would shoot. Somebody would shoot from one corner of the room, another corner of the room. Yeah. He said that everything went perfect. He said, oh my God, they had, to, they had it laid out. She, she did it up. She had all her girlfriends there, yeah. and they had, from what he told me, a magnificent time and a magnificent shoot. She had the wine out. She had the yeah. wine and cheese thing going. Uh, it might yeah. have been about 12 girls. Mind you, you got to think about this time period. We didn't have YouTube and That's right. Facebook That's right. and all this other shit. That's right. And, you so know, we were ahead of the game. We were, we were right before YouTube popped off, really. He he wrapped everything up and he and he, he said everything was just kind of like how you would expect it with the females were saying some of the same things that we were hearing up here. The beauty of it was it was a different location and, and, and potentially, you know, some different visuals. For yeah. some freakish, devilish reason, this one particular hiccup happened that was just unimaginable like you wouldn't wouldn't dream of he sends it all back through ups and then the nightmare happens yeah it was, it was a delay and i was i'm yeah. waiting on the footage and i'm, I'm calling him like shabai you, you sent the um footage and stuff right he's like yeah i sent it man and uh, i say okay i go online i track the package and it went to landover and it, mm-hmm. it did something that it never did before like once it got the landover Immediately, either the same day or if not the same day, the next day, they ship it to its destination. Mm-hmm. It, it got held in Landover for at least two days. I'm like, this is odd. Why is it staying? Why is it still in Landover? Each time I went to go check. So eventually, um, I got it by the third day. And I'm asking him, and he's saying the same thing, scratching his head like, yeah, why is it hung up in Landover? Dude, you should have been at that package. I was like, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know what that's about. And I'm, I'm kind of thinking the worst, but I'm not going there. I'm like, oh, well, it should be fine. Maybe just whatever reason somebody's not doing their job or didn't process it properly. Yeah. Eventually, I get the package. And then as I'm going through the box, I'm seeing mm-hmm. the tripod. And there's nothing else in the, in the box. <laughs> 
and, and, and the box looks out of the ordinary. So mm -hmm. I'm like, what is this? I call him immediately. What's going on, dude? Didn't you say you, dude? I sent you everything. I said, what's what was in the package? The cameras in the package and a, at least about four or five tapes in the tripod. The tripod is there. There's no camera and there's no tapes. For whatever reason, maybe it went through an X-ray scan or something. To, uh, cut into our package. Stole. I didn't care about the damn camera. I wanted the tape. They stole our footage and stole the camera. Right. And dude, I was. I know we were devastated, man. Yeah, that shit was a blower. Blow, after all that time and effort to get him to do what he needed to do, to yeah. put that group together, and we're not even on site to even manage any of that, but for it to go perfectly like it did, yeah. we had that happen, dude. That was a straight yeah. kick in the nuts, and then some, boy. Okay, and check this out, man. Honestly, it doesn't matter how much we would have uh, paid insurance for. Mm -hmm. We didn't, you know, if they were going to take it, they took what the fuck we needed. That's exactly. what we needed. Yep. And so, I was going to even... Even if we, if we insured that shit for $20,000, it wouldn't have been enough. Exactly. It, okay, I will agree. Because to this day, dude, we never, we never saw what that looked like. <laughs> yeah. Day.